In this video, I'm going to talk about another panel data estimation technique, which is known as random effects. So to talk about random effects, I'm going to use an example, and it's the example which we've been using in the last few videos. So we're looking at the various factors which influence a house price in a given city I at a particular point in time. So th these time periods could be years, they could be months, could be decades, etc. And we say that that's equal to some constant beta naught plus beta one times the crime rate in that city I at that time T plus beta two times the unemployment rate in that city I at that time period T. And furthermore, we're assuming that we've explicitly controlled for the time dependent factors which don't vary across city by including dummy variables for the different time periods. And I'm just not going to include them here so that we don't have to write too much. But we're still going to include our unobserved heterogeneity term, this alpha i here, as well as our idiosyncratic error, uit. And we spoke about how it was appropriate to use fixed effects or first differences if we thought that this unobserved term alpha i was correlated with one or more of our independent variables. So the reason being that if we were to estimate this above model via called OLS in the circumstance where this assumption is true, then we would have some sort of endogeneity. So we definitely can't use called OLS if this assumption is true. So we have to use the techniques which remove this alpha i term here which are known as first differences or fixed effects estimation. However, if we were to assume that the covariance between alpha i and any of the independent variables was in fact equal to zero, then we wouldn't necessarily need to use either of these two techniques, the first differences or, first, uh, or fixed effects estimation, right? Because we haven't got this issue of endogeneity plaguing the situation. So when might it be reasonable to assume that the covariance between the fixed effects alpha i and any of the independent variables was in fact equal to zero? Well it might be reasonable in circumstances whereby we think we have essentially controlled for all factors which are important in determining our dependent variables. So we've controlled explicitly by including them in our equation for all those factors which we think are, or at least in vast majority, important for determining house prices. Or another way of sort of thinking about this is if we assume that the effect alpha i is very small. So in other words, there is some unobserved heterogeneity between different cities, but it is, its effect is relatively small relative to the other variables. Perhaps in those two circumstances, this second assumption might be a better assumption to go under. So if we assume that there is no covariance between alpha i and the independent variables, so that's crime and unemployment in this example, what should we then do? Well, you might be tempted to think that what we could actually do is we could just use ordinary least squares on the original model, right? Because the problem with using ordinary least squares or pooled OLS on this original model was that because of the fact we had this unobserved heterogeneity, it was going to be both biased and inconsistent. But if we don't have this issue whereby there is some correlation between alpha i and the independent variables, then actually it turns out that pooled OLS is itself consistent or produces consistent estimates. So using pooled OLS is an absolutely fine thing to do. And similarly, as it turns out, so is using first differences and fixed effects estimation. Both of these two types of estimator are themselves consistent whether or whether we not have this issue of unobserved heterogeneity which is correlated with the independent variables. But it turns out that essentially these two, the fixed effects and the first differences estimation techniques, are a little bit too extreme. We don't need to do as much as either of these two techniques dictate. Essentially, first differences, the problem with that is it throws away one of the observations because we end up with T minus one periods for estimation rather than T periods. 
And fixed effects estimates are just a little bit too extreme. We don't need to go necessarily that far. However, pooled OLS has itself some problems. Even if we assume that all the conditions which we assumed for first differences and fixed effects are true, except of course for this particular assumption here, then it turns out that there is going to be some issue with pooled OLS. And to see that, we are going to write our error up here, our composite error, which is the thing which we don't actually see, as e to i t. So e to i t here is equal to alpha i plus u i t. And when we look at the covariance of e to i t with e to i s, so that's the error in for one city i at some point in time t with the error for the same city i at some other time s, then we can write that this is equal to the covariance of alpha i plus u i t with alpha i plus u i s, where I've just used this definition for eta i t. And even if we assume that there is no covariance between the alphas and the u, so both of these two terms in the expansion of this covariance bracket are themselves zero. And if we assume that there is no covariance in this idiosyncratic errors uit and uis, then we're still going to be left with the term which is the covariance between alpha i and alpha i. And that particular term, the covariance of alpha i and alpha i, is just the variance of alpha i, which I'm going to call sigma alpha squared. And the variance is necessarily greater than zero. So in circumstances, even if we do have this particular assumption being true, whereby alpha i isn't correlated with the independent variables, if we estimate this above equation via pooled OLS, then our errors are going to be serially correlated with one another. And when we have serially correlated errors, typically we well, in the past, we've spoken about how we can use another technique to actually correct for this serial correlation of errors. And that particular technique is feasible generalized least squares estimates. It's feasible because of the fact that we have to estimate the degree of serial correlation and errors. And it's GLS because essentially we are correcting, or we're going to transform our model to correct for this particular serial correlation. And in panel models, in this particular example, the feasible generalized least squares estimator takes on the name of the random effects estimator. And because we've corrected for this serial correlation, it turns out that random effects models will actually be more efficient than both pooled OLS and fixed effects or first differences.